All right, all right. Take my money? Perfect. Perfect. Futuristic gas station, baby. You pull into what you think is a gas station. Yeah, yeah, we've been here. Got the before. ice. Gonna go to the store. Get to the gas station, do a bit of shopping. Whoa. Yeah, they have a bunch of crazy shit. <laughs> Hype. Something hype. Super Future Skater Robo Dinosaurs Max Magazine. That sounds hype as hell. Gimme. Are you sure you want this? You're pretty sure you outgrew a Super Future Skater Robo Dinosaurs Max Magazine when you were like 15. Bro! Is that this month's edition of SS of SFSRDMM? Can I borrow it when you're done? Yeah. That's such a good issue. Check out the interviews. They did a Q&A with Skatosaurus Rexatron and a guy we think was Tony Hawk. Okay, apparently this magazine is a babe magnet. So you pay money for it. There are plenty of articles to read. Ten robo dinosaurs that are so fucking cool. Sick of skateboard tricks to do in bed. Spoiler, it's the melon grab. Dope hair colors that'll make your stepmom hate you. Twelve robo dinosaurs that are even cooler than the ones on that other list. Fuck, this is the peak of modern journalism. Read the articles a lot of your friends. The next hour of the road trip flies by with your dramatic, engaging narration. Seriously, from one narrator to another, you did great. Are you classically trained? Take hype. I think I'm ready. Let's go. But now also drain me of my hype, you know? Okay, nothing guaranteed to drain my hype. Uh, let's, let's see what we're working with here. Let's see what we're working with here. Okay, neither destination will drain my hype, so I gotta look for something that'll maybe boost soul. Okay, Raven the Desert is guaranteed to boost soul. So I guess we're going there. Yep, in the middle of this desert, there's ravers. Okay. So definitely want to go for the soul up. We either have to lose stamina or money. We'll take stamina loss, I guess. You're all searching for the best spot to party when you're approached by three smiling spirits. Polly, you made it to the rave. I'm so glad you're here. Yes. Yeah, it's great to see you. Scott, Zay, meet Summer, Macarena, and Cheese. There they go, the party's passed. Oh boy, they know how to get down. You bet. It's our unfinished business to make sure you guys dance, drink, plenty of water, and have a bitch in time. Awesome, bro! <laughs> we were just trying to find a good spot to party. Finding the perfect spot is so important. You gotta find that middle ground in the party where it's not, like, overcrowded, but you're also not dancing alone, you know? You want to be close to the bar to order drinks, but not so close you're standing in beer and piss all night. Also, consider proximity to the DJ. Not so close you mingle with the lame DJ groupies, but close enough to get the coveted DJ nod of acknowledgement. Ah, the DJ nod of acknowledgement. It's like, you really get the vibe. Great job. It'll probably take 30 to 60 minutes to find the sweet spot, but don't worry, it'll be worth it when we're partying in that spot for the next 72 hours straight. Um. Okay, hmm. I'm ready to take this journey. What about this spot next to us? Is it a good place to start? He goes to party's pass, examine the spot with some rulers, levels, and barometers, making calculations. Holy shit. This is it. It's the perfect spot. It's like, the perfectest of the perfect spots. Give me a hug, puppy boy. You're the bestest. Scott beams and wags his tail, then suddenly he clutches his stomach. Oh, I'm sorry, guys, I get so excited about the spot. I forgot it made me have to pee. It's okay, Scott. No worries, buddy. Want me to take you to the part of potty so you don't get lost? No, I can do it alone. I've got a good sense of direction. You guys enjoy the perfectest spot. I'll be right back. Scott leaves and you party hard. You party so hard, an hour has passed before you realize he still isn't back. Shit, you should try to go find him. Rookie mistake, my dude. If you leave this spot, there's almost no chance you'll find it again. Man. We can't just leave him, though. Surely you can come up with a creative solution to find Scott, Zay. Perhaps I can. Perhaps I can. Hmm. So either we can start a conga line in the perfect spot and dance your way into finding Scott, you can later trace your way back to the conga line's origin point, or hire Wyatt Solomon, hard-boiled party detective. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's conga time, baby. Celebration twerk! <laughs> that sounds insane. So insane, it just might work. Go on, Zoe. Shake what your mama gave you. 
It's a big risk being the leader of the conga line. What if you start to conga and no one joins in and you're a sad one monster conga line with no friends? But you throw yourself into it, bravely shaking your booty and dancing forward. And a drunk stranger grabs your shoulders and joins in. Woohoo! More people join your party centipede. The conga is impossible to resist, like a drunken partygoer black hole. Don't worry, we'll make sure the end of the conga line is still in this spot when you come back. Godspeed, Zoe. You shake your groove thing and conga across the rave. As your line grows, so does your responsibility to lead it. This much conga takes stamina from your body. Finally, you spot Scott at a food truck buying fries. You grab him. Hey, bro! Nice conga line. Should I join? There's no time. You have to return to your spot. Your conga pilgrimage is almost at its end. You turn to the dancer behind you and tell him you now bestow the great responsibility of being the conga leader done to him. With all the gravitas of the of a young prince taking up the mantle of a king, he promises that the fate of the conga line will be safe in his funky feet. Yeah, you're back. You're a masterful conga leader, Zai. Took everything in me not to join in. The ghosts of parties past now bestow the title of party MVP upon you. Yes, you gain soul for finding Scott. Let me untangle my tentacles first. Awesome. Awesome. Soul down. Soul down. Soul down. Let's go. It's space station, baby. Oh, is that, that's going to be the fucking Among Us one, though, isn't it? Uh-oh, random event. What do we got? You're driving along when you see your old pal, Brigadier Beluga, on the side of the road, reading a map upside down. Oh, hello again, Valiant Ones. Many thanks for the assistance in Commander Volanda's siege. It is wonderful and utterly convenient that ye have found me once more, for I once again find myself floundering on a quest to serve the Vanderbilt crown. I am in search of the Royal Priestess Amanda. She is visiting the Sacred Sanctuary. A monastery only accessible to those who take a leap of faith. Now the priestess must return home for the royal feast, but I cannot find the entrance to the monastery. Prithee, do you have any ideas? Uh, you said you had to take a leap of faith, right? Aye. And there's a cliff right over there. Aye. So what if? So you take a leap of faith off the cliff to find the sanctuary. It's Chekhov's gun smoking right here in front of you. But, um, what if thou art wrong and I leap off a cliff to my untimely demise? You mean you wouldn't risk dying to find your princess? Some knight you are. Oh. Boo, fake fan, fake knight in shining armor. You suspect that jumping off a cliff isn't Brigadier Beluga's only option. You could also try ordering some pizza to be delivered to the sacred sanctuary, then following the pizza delivery person into the sanctuary. That costs money, don't do that. Or praying for directions, pray. I'm skeptical that that will work. Oh. Of course you are. Typical man, never wanting to ask for directions. But I asked thee for directions. Yeah, but did you try praying for them? Didn't think so. Let me show you how it's done. Hiya! Hey God, it's Polly. I know we don't get along, but let's set aside our status as frenemies with will they won't they vibes and broker a temporary truce here. Will you tell us where the sanctuary is, pretty please? I hear us nothing. Hath God abandoned us? Hey babe, I'm sure plan B will work. Let's be so annoying that giving us what we want is easier than denying us. Hey God! Come on God, answer us, you omnipotent bastard. God! God! God. God, 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 What do you want? <gasps> Holy shit, God. No, with amongst the sacred sanctuary, says the man in the magical doorway behind you. Will you please be quieter? We're meditating in here. Wait. Prithee, let me into the sacred sanctuary. I beseech an audience with the royal priestess Amanda Vanderbilt. Fine, you can come in, but next time, can you just take the cliff entrance instead of screaming outside the back door? Nice. Sweet, I knew we could do it. I always believed in the power of being really annoying. You abandoned cold critical logic and turned instead to blind faith and prayer. As a result, you lost mind and gained magic. Ooh. Oh no, oh no, not my mind. <laughs> Ooh. Three, two, one. Yep. Smile. We're dressing up as astronauts, baby. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Another round of Among Us, baby. You fucking know it. Let me see. I want to make sure I, I know what I'm. Want to make sure I know what I'm getting into here. Celebration twerk. Huh? Wow. Yeah. So our only options for losing soul are to game hyper magic, which are you know, our very fucking high ones. Uh, best option is to go for the one we've already seen. All right. Mm -hmm. I think I'm ready. All right, definitely need to lose magic. That's magic up, don't want that. Drain my magic. No one wants to drain my magic. This is bullshit. 
Wait, my hype is higher than my magic. I just noticed that. My hype's at 19. Oh, actually, yeah, let's look into that. Holy shit, take my hype. The hole's the only one that can bring down the hype. We really need to do that. So, unfortunately, that means doing something we've already done. I'm pretty sure. Yep, we're gonna admire the hole. And then to do it. Polly, Polly, listen. Bye. Oh wait, no, no, no. This is gonna be a different one. Because before we did this one, where you know we bone the hole. Nope, now we have to go for golf. Which will kill our hype, but you know what? Golf. Soon bad golfers from all over the from all over flock to the hole. They bring golf balls, putters, and backup putters for when they accidentally throw their original putters into the hole. Lame. Wow, Zoe, this is shockingly boring. Shocking because golf was already so boring and you somehow made it worse. Huh. This is weird. Golf is a sport and has balls like all the best sports, but even I can't get hyped about this. I'm somehow less hype about this. You watch two businessmen approach the bottomless hole. They hit their balls a couple of times but can't sink a single putt. <laughs> I sure do love golf. One says he hits his ball backwards. It's so fun, not tedious or soul crushing at all. You're right. Golfing is every bit as fun as a meeting that could that could have been an email. Wait, do you find that fun? No, actually. I think I've developed a subconscious association between business and golf. Do I only golf for business reasons? I think I do too. Why are we torturing ourselves like this? Why do we have boring business meetings while discussing the most boring activity on earth? I have no idea. I think one person suggested it a long time ago. Perhaps ironically, and we've kept it up out of pure inertia on everyone's part. Well, I'm tired of it. Let's have our next meeting somewhere actually enjoyable. Like a laser tag arena, or a skate park. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm kinda impressed. And I think too, white collar business types would be interested in sh skating or laser tag. That's just a stereotype. We work in business, but we don't live where we work. We still have fun shredding up at a skate park. Party! Wanna party with us later? And that's the story of how you saved a small business and snorted coke off a stockbroker's skateboard in the same day. The whole owners pay you money for your consultancy. Do you update my fanfic? Hmm. Now I could go talk to Valerie again. I could. I don't think I'm quite at the point where I need where I need to go to my cautious planner thing where it's like, oh, bring this down, bring your highest one down, bring your uh, lowest one up. I don't think I'm quite that desperate yet. Getting there. Uh I really want to keep using Valerie. Let's choose wisely. Okay, I'm I'm curious though. Can you still get to the end of the road with a date though? I'm very curious about that. Cuz I, I don't know for sure. That's Okay, so nothing in the guide says anything about like you can't have a love interest locked in. So far, nothing, nothing says that you can't. So, I'm gonna rock with it. Let's talk about Valerie's future. Uh. My future? Ugh. What? Nothing. It's just not my favorite topic. I don't have a plan for my future, really. And not having a plan doesn't exactly fly with my sister. Vera's the best. You know Vera. She has plans on top of plans. She has two dozen spreadsheets to manage her hundred different goals. She has everything planned. The house of her dreams, the job she wants to have, all the hobbies she wants to master. <laughs> That's Vera for you. It's true I admire about her, but it's definitely not for me. I go with the flow, let life unravel by itself. <laughs> and so every now and then she asks what my plans are. She means well, and she's my favorite person on the planet, but she can be a bit suffocating. And the thing is, we all look for meaning, for purpose. My sister has this very rigid notion of purpose and success. Purpose can take infinite forms at different paces for each person. It can even change over the course of your life. Makes sense. Yeah, you do you and all that. Meow. Basically. I would still love to better understand myself and what my definition of purpose and success is. I'm no hurry to find all that out, but I think it's good to always be in a state of curious wandering to avoid falling in total passive stasis. The question is, how do I start this search? Ironically, I feel a bit lost. Maybe you can help, Valerie. Maybe you can help, Valerie. Fiction is a window into potential lives. Binge watch 100 TV shows to analyze which path works best for you, from quirky lawyer to meth cook. 
If you don't know what to do, a good solution is to start a family. When you lose all free time, only then will you realize what you want to do with your life. Strip yourself from all expectations, get a backpack, and get lost in a faraway land where no one knows you. Become a blank slate in order to learn who you are. That sounds fun. Oh, not bad. Fucking guessed it right again, first... I'm still surprised that this whole time I've been able to guess them right, right off the bat. I'm not trying to pat myself on the shoulder or anything, I'm just like, Liam was the only one where it was just like, I didn't know right off rip who it... What the answer was. That's... That's not a bad idea, Zoe. Yeah, sometimes you you lose perspective when you're looking at a problem from too close. It makes sense. Maybe by changing my environment, I can breathe a bit and discover what I really want for myself. You could even go by a different name. Aww. What do you mean? Well, it's a little silly thing, but just imagine if you're living somewhere else under an alias and just not being Valerie. Nice. You build this new persona that feels totally new and see where it leads you. Wow. Hey, I like it. Zoe, you're on a streak of weird but actually good ideas. When did you have your breakfast today? Uh, pancakes? It shows. Huh. Thanks? <laughs> it's a compliment, you clever doofus. Take it. <laughs> okay. Spend the rest of the night discussing where Valerie could go for this journey into self-discovery, and which alias she could use. Is Valerie sure? I'm not going for a date ending anyway, but you know, sure. Untangle my tentacles first. All right, either kill my magic or kill my money. Uh, neither of you are guaranteed to do that. All right. Ooh. Okay. The abandoned village. I can lose money and get mined up. That's a great trade. I don't even have to look at the rest of them. That's where we're going, baby. Wow, there is nobody here. I've been wandering this village for a bit and haven't met another living soul. What could have happened to all the inhabitants? All their stuff is here. Hmm. Well, I suppose the first order of business is to investigate what happened. Oh yeah, last time I pillaged. The mystery is afoot. You and your friends begin searching the village for clues, and you run to your friend, Joy. Guys, what are you doing here? Oh, what are you guys doing here? I thought this place was abandoned. Hey. It is. That's why we're investigating what happened. I don't know if we can pair clues. I found some really compelling raw hide earlier before I ate it. Ah. No offense, but I'd rather work alone. Whatever you took whatever took all these villagers could be seriously evil. You guys should leave this to the world saving professionals. <laughs> Come on, we can figure this out together. I for one think everyone realizes this village sucks and they all moved to Vegas. Sure. If you guys really want to help me, why don't you try solving this Rubik's Cube I found? It's a very important clue. Definitely. Let's do it! I'll solve it, Joy. I won't let you down. 20 minutes later. Well, I'm stumped. This would probably be easier if I wasn't colorblind. That's his booty. Joy only gave us that clue to distract us from the real investigation. She doesn't think we're competent detectives. Let's solve this case before she does. If we find the answer first, Joy will finally see how good and smart we are. <laughs> good call, Scotty. We'll be a regular Sherlock and Watson. I'm great at reading people's micro-expressions to deduce what they're thinking about. Me! 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 Oh, oh, do me. What do my micro-expressions say I'm thinking about? Uh... Milk bones? No, wait, you're thinking about sports. Final answer, am I right? You're asking me? I don't know what I'm thinking about. That's why I needed you to tell me. Doesn't take a detective to see that Polly and Scott are hopeless at this on their own. Luckily, you know exactly how to turn them into great investigators. Give fancy technology to enact the ultimate investigation technique. Zoom and enhance. <laughs> or you need to you need the acute perception of Sherlock Holmes, who could analyze a myriad of details just by looking at a crime scene. His secret? Doing lots of cocaine. As tempting as that is, uh, yeah, no. You spend money on some zoom and enhance equipment software. You and your friends use it to scrutinize a photo of the village taken a week before everyone vanished. What's on the roof of the building? A roof of the bowling alley. Zay, zoom in on that. There's a janitor on the roof. He's doing nefarious janitor things. Ah, uh, he looks pretty boring. This isn't the lead we needed. Huh. Are you sure? Zay, zoom in on that wrench at the janitor's tool belt. It's really suspicious. How so? Maybe the janitor was going to use the wrench to... Loosen the bolts that were holding the city together, or... Aww. Nope, I got nothing. You won't let Scott beat himself up. You zoom in and enhance and into the wrench, and even further... Even further, ensure that you'll find something. <laughs> wow, you can see all the atoms that make up the wrench. Look at that molecular chaos. Can we do anything with that? Here, the villagers disappear because they all succumb to the chaotic destruction and entropy that occurs in the atomic level every day. Huh? Damn, that's a really good explanation. Where'd you come up with that, Scott? <laughs> I don't know. I already forgot what I said. Can we go bowling? You should enjoy the evidence you've gathered on your way to the bowling alley. 
She's underwhelmed, but you know you cracked this case wide open. You gain mind. I think I'm ready. Hell yeah. All right, drain my magic. Who wants to drain my magic? No one. Stam can I get my stamina up? No. There is an unknown at the kite tournament. So the kite tournament here is gonna have one of those, uh, one of those special ones, where I can stand just. If I do it right, I can just gain without losing. Which I mean, come on. This tournament is serious business. Competitors from all walks of life have trained hard for this. <laughs> if you have prodigies from kite flying clans, kite flying gurus, athletes of ancient kite flying techniques, then there's you. It's pretty much just here for the drama. What do you do? Enter the tournament. You're surrounded by buff, intense kiters with vibrant hair colors and oodles of pro tag energy. Yes, these are your people. You have to enter the tournament. Awesome, bro! You're entering? That's awesome, Zoe. I know you're a professional kite flyer. It's by all logic you are. You see, while Scott and Polly were busy being popular and having fun, you were busy studying the kite. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's why you were so unpopular? <laughs> Wouldn't have been my first guess, but good for you, boo. Your friends sit in the audience to cheer you on, and you fly your kite up to the bracket, all the way to the final eight. Hmm, you are my next competitor? Zoe, is it? You fly your kite honorably. I can see you're well trained. But your reign of victory ends now. <gasps> That's Chio, the lonesome kite. He's the mysterious aloof protege, and he'll stop at nothing to win and preserve his honor. Dad, how do you know all that? I've been reading the plot summary of this kite tournament on Munchie Roll. Your kite is well constructed, gracefully. Graceful. She slips through the air like my sword through tender flesh. But no matter how well made your kite is, Zoe, it cannot fly without its tether. Chio juggle, jiggles his sword in its scabbard. You don't see it move, but suddenly you realize your kite line's been cut. Wow, so fast. I hate to win like this, but more than that, I hate to lose. I'm sorry it has to be this way. That motherfucker. He's right, though. Your kite can't fly without a string. Or can it? We can either give the kite an uplifting pep talk, tell it that it's ready to fly by itself without your help, or... You thought you needed the line to control the kite, but it was a lie to stop you from reaching your full potential. It's time to awaken. It's time to become the Kite Mancer. Yeah, no, it's time to become the Kite Mancer. Yes, of course. You close your eyes, honing the kite energy within you. You imagine the creation of the world, the Big Bang, the explosion of stars, the planetary bodies filling the empty vacuum of space. You see your planet being formed. It began as a sphere covered in fire. Then the mountains pushed up and rocky earth covered its crust. Then water flooded the planet, the waves colliding with the newborn shores. And with water came plants. And with plants came air, the atmosphere you rely on to breathe. And with air came wind. And on the wind came kites, the fifth element. Yeah, that's exactly how it worked. You must channel the wild, unbridled spirit of those first ancient kites. Their magic fills your core, exploding from within. What is this madness? How are you controlling your kite with random martial arts poses? Because Zoe just became the legendary Kite Mancer, bro. Now she can totally control all the kites. Wait, all the kites? This just got way easier. Take control of Chio's kite and crash it hard into the ground. No! I can't believe it. You've defeated me, Zoe, and brought shame upon my name. It seemed that while my blade could slash your kite string, there was a stronger string all along that connected both our souls. Well done. Fuck yeah. You ascend to the final four. With your kite's new power, your victory should be assured. Your defeat is assured. For it is I, your next opponent, Sarth of the Cobra Kite. Ha. Huh. You already defeated Chio, my greatest rival. Which is what I was supposed to do. What the hell, bro? For failing to uphold the Cobra code of not- The Cobra- Fuck you. Of not getting in the middle of monogamous sworn rivalries. I'm afraid I need to take you out of the competition. Sarth swerves his kite to crash into yours. You manage to dodge his attack. He's only able to leave a tiny scratch on your kite's surface. Don't look so smug. I didn't need to crush your kite with force. I only need to apply the secret Cobra Kite technique. I just grazed your kite with my venomous kite fangs. Your kite will never survive to the end of the round. Wait, Sarth poisoned your kite? That's something he can do? You need to save your kite before it's too late. Hmm. Let's see. Focus. This technique is just psychological warfare to make you lose your cool. Just remember, kites don't have cardiovascular systems, and thus they can't really get poisoned. Or, so you poison your kite, then fight fire with fire, pour gasoline on his kite, and set it on fire. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, no, bro. I'm thinking we set his kite on fire. 
Good thing you thought I had and brought a can of lighter fluid. You check it at Sarth Sky and chase it with a lit match. No! Oh, you deduce my kite's greatest weakness. Poison type kites are weak to fire. Uh, I'm pretty sure all kites are weak to fire, poison or not, because they're, you know, flammable. Actually, the more correct word is inflammable. The word flammable gained popularity because inflammable sounds like it's opposite, but who asked you, Chio? You already lost the tournament. You don't need to butt into conversations to be a vocal snob and feel smart. You defeated me, Zoe. My co-brand has been forever tainted. Please, plunge this poisonous fang into my chest and kill me with honor. Uh, no. You're not gonna murder Sarth over a kite tournament, right? And so after two fierce fights, you make it to the final round of the tournament, where the best of the best compete. Character arcs are dramatically completed. The stakes have never been higher. You're my final opponent? Seriously? I thought it'd at least be Sarth or Chio, not some total amateur. Whatever, kicking your ass will be a total breeze. I'm FJ, Commander of Wind. The fuck? If FJ can control wind and this is a kite tournament, isn't that basically cheating? Eh, not really. In an enemy-style sports tournament, special powers and ultimate moves are all fair game. But FJ has a reputation for sabotaging kites, bribing the judges, and using explosives to rig the competition, which are all definitely cheating. Don't look now, Zoe, but it looks like somebody swapped your kite fabric for porcelain. Good luck winning now, rookie. Uh-oh. Oh no, porcelain is the worst kite material. It's so heavy and breakable. Tch, typical FJ. You wonder why his unofficial kiter name is that fucking jerk. What a co-brutal twist. Surely there's no way Zoe can come out of this one on top. Maybe not, but you've come this far and aren't backing down now. You've still got one more trick up your sleeve. Yes, yes I do. Either your kite won't survive once you throw it to the skies, you must aim to kill. Throw your porcelain kite directly into FJ's kite, a true kamikaze attack. Or you still have a few minutes to go full engineer and bring your kite to its next evolutionary state, a kick-ass drone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As much as I would love to just throw my fucking kite at his. Because believe me, I would love to do that. Unfortunately, I must turn it into a kick-ass drone. In the precious minutes before the final round starts, you bust ass in a technology upgrade montage to save your kite. What a sad last ditch effort. Why are you even trying? What are you even trying to do? That porcelain disaster will never fly. Oh, won't it? You whip out your remote control and pilot your kite drone into the air. Nani? <laughs> Fucking Jojo. Holy shit! Whoa! <laughs> oh, what a weak twist! This isn't over. My kite also has a final form. FJ does some dramatic poses and screams at the top of his lungs. In a burst of blinding light, his regular kite transforms into a bigger, stronger, weirder looking kite. Behold, the Forbidden Kite Jitsu, Form 9, the most complex and undefeatable form in all of kiting. Eh, it's still a kite made of fabric, no matter how many poses FJ does. You shoot it down with your drone easily. No! You did it, Zoe. Finally, our years of training have come to fruition. I always knew you had it in you. I am proud of you. Zoe, you did it! You defeated FJ, effectively avenging the murder of your father! Zoe, seeing you fight with such passion and finesse has made me realize that my feelings for you go beyond friendship. <laughs> sure, sure, go away, generic anime character. Stop building random lore around Zoe. Hey fam, let's leave with the spoils of the battle before Zoe gets sucked into a different piece of fiction. As you drive away, you see the face of your late father in the clouds looking at you with approval. <laughs> what are you doing? No, stop. That's not your real father. This is a generic anime dad. Ignore that cloud, Zoe. Enough anime vibes for today. Eh, anyway, you leave with the money and hype from the kite tournament. What a character arc. Let me untangle my Extra stats, first. baby. Extra stats, that's what it's all about. Uh, but I'm down to get for someone to kill my magic. Oh, hey, perfect. Guaranteed magic killer. Alright, let's go to the circus. You, Paul and Sky, grab some popcorn and head to your seats to watch the circus. On your way there, the ringleader runs up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready, set, boom! Yeah, we're gonna be magicians. Time to dust off your top hat and find that pesky rabbit that got loose in your luggage, because you're gonna be a magician. The ringmaster explains that doing magic is a passion, and therefore to honor that, they tell you that you won't get paid. Wait, what? That is factually untrue. Magicians are entertainment workers, and therefore deserve fair pay. She's right. That's not the case today, apparently. It's time to do some magic tricks and get everything you can from the experience. Time. <laughs> hey, circus fans, I'm Polly the Phantasmal. Watch me make all the whiskey in this flask disappear. 
Boo! Your magician name sucks. Doesn't even start with the same letters. Um, actually it does. Phantasmal starts with a silent P. Boo! Came here to see hot chicks and leotards, not get fucking spelling lesson. Ugh, everyone's a critic. Scott, you try entertaining your stupid cousins. I'm a good boy! <laughs> I've Scott the Spectacular. I'm gonna use my magic powers to transform into a really good boy. Got that shit out, Scott. Can't use magic to turn into a thing you already are. Um, thanks, I think. This is a tough crowd. But you know a magic trick that'll wow even the wolf pack. Make all fanfics canon, or the annoying trick where you reveal everything is cake. I have no idea what either of those are gonna do for me, so I'm, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm, 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 we're gonna play it safe here. We're gonna play it safe. Um, I can either get stamina or hype up. Stamina, for sure. Yeah, no, stamina. Stamina, stamina. So, uh, yeah. Let's reveal everything is cake. Oh, right, because it's food and then we eat it. Duh. Okay, that makes sense. Take out a knife, cut a slice of cake. Then you take out another knife, cut into your original knife, revealing that it was also cake. Whoa! Cool! You slice your magician's hat to reveal it was cake. Then you take out your shoes and slice them. Also cake. Okay, it's getting a little old. Too bad, because it keeps going. See this priceless family heirloom my grandfather gave me on his deathbed? Bro, don't do it! Too late. It's cake. Everything is cake and nobody can stop me. You're laughing and swinging your knife wildly. A magical, a magical cake-fueled egomaniac. Then the knife suddenly slips from your hands. Oh. Where'd the knife go? Sorry? <laughs> Holy shit! Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? Is Scott made of cake? I always knew it. You can't leave Scott to this frosting-covered fate. You spend four magic restoring him to his former self. <laughs> but, uh, don't worry, everybody. I'm okay. Turns out it tastes pretty good. Phew. At least now you can magically prove that Scott is yummy. You can gain stamina from eating all the cake you created. I've memorized the wiki. Hell yeah. Someone kill my hype. Uh, uh, damn. Nothing guaranteed to kill my hype, huh? So we got some gains we can get. Do any of those gains take my hype? Uh, that's what we're really looking for. Okay, so the troll gas station, two of those gain Magic or mind could take my hype. Which is decent. Alright, those are not the lowest stats, but you know, they're on the decline. And that was just going to boost mind or stamina. So it doesn't really matter either way. Because stamina, I don't need to do have much of magic or mind. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's swap magic for hype. You decide to stop when you see a certain big beluga who seems to be on the verge of having a heart attack. Hey, boo. Pregnant your beluga, my man. Why are you looking distressed? Oh, it is you, my noble newfound friends. I'm contemplating my likely fate, which will likely involve my head on a bike. Beluga, beluga, beluga. What did you do this time, you zany rascal? <sighs> I was given a most crucial mission by none other than Her Royal Highness, LaDonda Vanderbilt. <laughs> beluga, did you mix whites and colors when you were doing the royal laundry? Alas, if only it were that. The Royal Highness is on a most critical diplomatic trip in Hell. The Mer Kingdom doth attempt to broker some treaties with three of the circles of Hell, but we have common enemies. But alas, Hell is so prone to betrayal and general treachery that they tend to be quite skeptical of any strategic alliance. After days of incessant diplomacy, La Donda hath commanded I bring a few Mer diplomats who are knowledgeable in the ways of Hell, but... But... Belega? Prithee. Spare me from narrating my embarrassing failures. Let's simply say the diplomats fell off a cliff, okay? There are no more. Soon shall I also be. Polly, I have a question. My bros? Wait. I'm getting a bit lost this much info. Just to be sure, the head on a pike thing is like a bad thing, right? You want to avoid that or? That's a bad thing, Scott. But bringing our beluga here is in luck because the prank masters are gonna save the day. We just need some costumes. And that's how, thanks to some expertly crafted costumes, you infiltrate the diplomatic meeting. No one can tell you you're not the, not the real mer diplomats. <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Now you just need to help LaDonda secure a treaty with Hell, and surely she'll pardon Brigadier Beluga. This might be your moment to shine, actually. After hours of fierce negotiation, the whole discussion seems to have reached a dead end. The Mer Kingdom is failing to offer something valuable enough for Hell to accept the alliance. 
What would be an unexpected asset for the Mer Kingdom to offer that tip the balance in favor of this treaty? Being underwater gives the Mer Kingdom juicy intel to barter with. You can offer the full iceberg, explain. That seems like mind. Or hell is a very unpopular destination for tormented souls. That's just because it's missing its own catchy theme song. Hmm. Now this one seems like hype, but I don't know. And you know, I don't, I don't wanna... I don't wanna, you know, like, yo. Know. The thing is, I don't wanna, right? I don't want to fuck up. I don't wanna fuck up. This is important, right? I don't wanna, I don't wanna fuck up. Plot lines. Here we go. Here we go. Plot lines. Plot lines. Plot lines. Okay, I was absolutely right. It's it's a minder hype thing, so obviously we're gonna go with hype. What? Hmm. I'm intrigued by this proposal. You? Ah. Yes. Surely this intelligent diplomat is talking about an anthem. The working from excels us controlling the masses while keeping the population loyal to the crown. We're riddled with betrayal, always threatened by coups. We could learn from your expertise. Indeed. Our noble aristocrat certainly meant this. We must assume you didn't come to this important meeting empty-handed. Yes, we would love to hear a first draft of this anthem to prove the value of this alliance. That's not a problem. Our wise diplomat here doubles as an anthem composer. They most certainly brought a proposal. For you see, their artistry is fueled by the knowledge that they will be beheaded if they don't deliver their best work. See? Look at our Mark Kingdom, always keeping their subjects motivated. How admirable. Uh, uh, okay. Here I go. Fuck everyone who's not in hell, especially angels. Throw them in a cell. Fuck everyone who's not in hell, except for the Merc Kingdom. They're pretty swell. Fuck everyone who is in hell, because demons are fucking hot as hell. <laughs> fucking hell. Fuck in hell. Let's all fucking go to hell. It's not bad. I just think the third line is a little misleading. No, it's a subversion of the established poetic form. It's deep. People eat that shit up. True. I like the wordplay. The song is catchy and accurate. We demons are hot as hell, aren't we? Sure. And surely that song is just one of several tools of mass control the Merc Kingdom can provide us if this treaty is signed, right? If so, I'm in. That is completely right. That song was just the first of many boons to come your way. Shall we continue now? Yes, yes, I'd say we have a deal here. But an issue remains. How we can be sure you'll hold up your end of the bargain? I could raise the same question to you. Hell is known for backstabbing, no offense. None taken, but that fact also makes us quite skeptical of any sort of lasting alliance. It's clear that no treaty will serve its purpose unless we have solid assurances that both parties will hold up their end of the deal. There's an awkward silence that can obviously only be broken with a fantastic idea on how to ensure both sides will be legit about this. The fanfic twist. Orchestrate a strategic marriage. With the proper intel on who the betrothed should be, you can play into the trope of diplomatic allies to lovers. Mind? Both kingdoms should get matching tattoos. Is it just... A constant battle of mind and hype? Oh yeah, it, it once again just comes down to mind and hype, okay. T then tattoos it is. Great plan. <laughs> wow, that's a rad idea, Zoe. Yep. I mean, Mer Diplomat number two. You're suggesting we secure a commitment by getting tattoos. Yeah, tattoos are cool. Our advisors here surely mean that both parties should secure fidelity via some sort of arcane glyphing. Like a spell carved into our skins that will ensure we abide by this alliance. Ah, oh, that makes much more sense. And the tattoos can be super cool. Uh, it can have a shark to symbolize the Merc Kingdom. And a hawk for hell. There are no hawks in hell. But hawks are rad. They are rad, certainly. None well, of that is irrelevant. The important part of the enchantment will be in the glyphs. The image can be whatever. Whatever, as in a cool shark and an awesome hawk doing the raddest handshake ever. Sure. What about the cool shark and the awesome hawk having a rad sex? Don't push it. Okay, okay, I'll check on it. This measure satisfy satisfies our side. Matching tattoos! Are we really getting tattoos of a shark and a hawk, your royal highness? No. <laughs> With everything agreed upon and a commitment clause in place, it seems the diplomatic meeting has been a huge success. Or it would be if it wasn't for what happens next. What? Angels! How'd they know about this gathering? <laughs> I might have told them. Barbados, how could you? 
How could you assume I was game for an alliance with other circles of hell, much less an alliance with these filthy fish-faced outsiders? No, no. Better just gotta deal with heaven. We had to bring you this vulnerable state for them to end you. Either we'll take over your circles, or if heaven comes to conquer hell, we've been promised a good portion of it to act as representatives for God. You treacherous bastard. You need to do something fast if you want to avoid, you know, dying. Violence is not the answer. Release the diplomacy dolphins. Or conjure some extraordinary ventriloquism skills to pretend you're the voice of God coming from nowhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I see. I say resort to ventriloquism. <laughs> Thanks to your magic prowess, you can amp up your ventriloquism skills. You project your voice as if it's a deep voice coming from nowhere, maybe from above. Stop this now. Who is that? It's me, God. God? Is, is that you? No, you moron, of course it isn't God. Prove your God. I don't need to prove anything. My whole thing is never proving anything. You must believe. Don't you have faith? I mean, they got you there. Faith is like a big thing for us. Yeah, shucks, they're right. I bet this is one of God's tests. Maybe. They're always testing people. Like that one time they tricked that random dude into almost killing his own son. Classic. Silence. Listen to me, or I will make you all kill your own sons. I think we should abide by God's word. Fuck. Yeah, I think we should call it a day. Yes, these hell scum were probably going to double cross us eventually anyway. Hey! They're wrong though. Fuck you all. The angels leave. This gives you the upper hand to overwhelm the hell traders and murder them. <laughs> we apologize for the treacherous ways of our former ally. We hope the fact that we are we were also targeted is proof that we're loyal to this treaty between us. Don't fret. We trust your loyalty to this alliance. Otherwise, this tactic of ours has most likely shown you how we deal with traitors in the Mer Kingdom. With a beautiful display of violence. Truly admirable. Should we sign these accords? If anything, this has confirmed how essential it is for us to deal with the threat of heaven. LaDonda shakes hands with the Hell Commanders. Diplomatic documents are signed. Her Royal Highness pardons you for all your for for your obvious costumes and for the murder of the real Mer diplomats, thanks to your crucial role in this negotiation. She get, pays you money, and even mentions she'd be pleased to welcome you into the Mer Kingdom if you're to visit. Hooray. Hell yeah. But also, get rid of my money. But also, like, take my money. I originally came here to, uh, to, to lose my hype, but also take my money. Can you take my money? Oh, you can take my money. You absolutely have a spot to take my money. Cool. This gas station looks like it was from the storybook. Ice. Yep. Go to the shop, baby. Take my money. Yay, shopping. The shelves are filled with all manner of junk. Colorful crystals, rusty keys, new dyes, pickled tongues, orc, orc porno magazines. <sighs> nah, you find all this at your standard flea market. I've seen better troll hordes. Excuse me, ma'am. Have you dared to besmirch the good name of my boss, Gibblebock the Greedy? Because that's, like, against store policy. Sorry, we didn't mean to. Do you guys sell any snacks or anything here? All I found to you was a taxidermied fairy. Too bony. Depends. What are your feelings on unicorn jerky? Um. Does it come hmm. in barbecue flavor? I was wondering what you had in the cursed items department. I'm a notorious collector of cool shit I probably shouldn't mess with. Well, the supply truck doesn't get in from the danger from the dungeons until tomorrow. But I can show you our items on the every curse must go rack. Hey, you're not one to turn down a bargain. You decide to buy a set of ritual troll lo-fi chants. The, ancient, the legendary keychain of Jariaya, the infamous troll warlock, or children's blood flavored soda. Well, that one's definitely stamina. Um, we're looking at mind magic or stamina. Mind or magic are about equal, so really it's whichever one I'd rather have. And magic is definitely the one that's harder to come by, so uh, yeah, money for magic if you don't mind. Um, am I supposed to know who Jariaya is? The whole gas station suddenly goes silent. A gnome with a lewd and novelty Jariaya sunglasses jumps up on the checkout counter. You don't know the tale of Jariaya the Forgetful, he cries. <laughs> nope, I don't know lots of things, like how trigonometry works, or what amalgamate means, or what we're talking about right now. Well, it's your lucky day. I'll recount the tale of Jariaya in song. Oh, that really isn't necessary. It is, actually. 
Perhaps you're still listening to the tale of Jayaya, the forgetful of store policy. There once was a warlock named Jayaya, who stood uh, at a mighty 4-4. He was clever and cute and courageous to boot, and he was forgetful to his very core. Jayaya'd be wed to the troll queen, they said. Jayaya'd be wed to the troll queen, they said, if he slayed the green dragon with ease. So he prepped his spells and bid us farewell, but forgot his carriage's keys. The dragon got away and destroyed the whole town. Jayaya and Troll Queen were no more. But for money, you'll never lose your keys, like Jayaya the Forgetful, boar. Wait, did the gnome just force you to purchase that keychain while you were singing that song? That's some powerful advertisement magic. Now that magic is yours, contained within this mystical, if tacky, keychain. 